Hi, my name is Leah Ilitello. My biological name was Suk Young, which means excellent light, but my parents decided to add that as my middle name versus my first name because it's not the easiest name to say for Americans. Um, I was born in South Korea, but currently I live in Minnesota. I don't remember like Korea that much, but I've heard stories of how my biological mom um, didn't know she was pregnant with me until later on in the, her pregnancy. And my biological parents didn't live together, but because they were so poor. So my biological mom lived with her parents and my biological dad lived with his parents. And I'm not sure about my two biological siblings. I got paperwork um, from the agency, but the bare minimum information about my siblings. I think I just came with those papers and I think my mom just knew about that information mm -hmm. and she knew a little bit about my biological mom and father. It was difficult growing up. I remember getting surprise looks from my classmates and people who are a couple years older than me or any age that I was related to my sister. She has blonde hair, blue eyes. I guess that was hard for me because I'm family oriented and I really wanted people to know that I was related to my siblings. But over the years, I've learned to accept my Korean heritage and be proud of it. I'm not ashamed that I don't look like my siblings anymore, but I've gotten compliments like, wow, like you look like your siblings. It doesn't look like you're adopted. like at all, like you look like you fit right in and you mold right in with them. Growing to accept my Korean identity, I think it was an independent thing where I ended up like gaining self-confidence in myself and learning to love myself for who I am versus not compare myself to my siblings, not really think like I'm an outsider anymore and accept who I am. So after this camp, um, it's made me really think about what identity really means to me. I never really thought of it before, but it made me realize like, wow, I really want to learn more about the Korean culture and learn the history behind it versus, um, versus like in school, like learning about the Korean War for a half hour. It makes me want to come back to the camp and tell others about the camp and to um, help other Korean adoptees or just Koreans in general to help them with their identity. It's been an emotional experience. I remember last year around the pandemic time, um, I decided to write forgiveness letters to my biological family, my biological mother and father and my biological brother and sister. I didn't realize how much bitterness I had um, towards my biological siblings, especially. I think it was jealousy in a way that they got to live in Korea. I knew I had some of the bitterness, but I realized writing those letters was so healing. Um, the healing had a different effect on me, realizing like, wow, like I want them to have a great life as well and to be healthy and happy as well. I don't want any bitterness towards them. It felt like a fresh breath of air in a way. Um, to write them. It was draining, but it was a process I'd do all over again if I could. The reason I did this is because I realized like I could go to therapy. I could um, do all these different things, but ultimately I think I have, I had to do it for healing for myself and to learn to forgive. <laughs> The idea is to not send it to them. It was more for a way for me to realize, like, I guess, apologize to them in a way for holding on to the bitterness. And also just hope the best for them. I don't think they need to apologize to me in any way. I believe my biological mother wanted a better life for me and for that just makes me happy. The saddest moment um, I can think of 
would have to be finding out that my grandfather had cancer and got progressively worse and finding out that um, not being able to say goodbye um, is really hard for me because I held bitterness against myself or unforgiveness, thinking he was angry at me because he was mad at me before because I tried to offer him something, trying to help. Again, with my grandfather, um, there was a bully on the bus. Um, I don't have my license yet, so I rode the bus. Um, there was a kid being inappropriate, um, and I remember talking with him. He's like, you know, Leah, like, I'm really proud of you. And I'm n he's a very stoic man, like, it's not very encouraging always. Um, and I remember just having a moment with him in the car, like, waiting for my dad to bring him home. He just told me, like, wow, Leah, like, I'm just so proud of you. Like, I've never heard him say that to anyone in my family before, or at least that I heard. Um, and I realized, like, wow, like, I need, I want to stand up for, like, people, and it's not okay for people to be treated badly, and I want to do this more often. I do have a voice. I've definitely thought about wanting to know my biological family a lot since I was a little girl. But as I got older, especially during the pandemic, I realized like my adopted family is my family. And I don't like to call them my adopted family necessarily because my parents raised me and my siblings. I told them like, oh, like, did you ever see me differently? Like, they're like, no, Leah, you're my sister. Never saw you differently. You're not different than us. And that was an emotional moment for me because my brother's very soft-spoken and doesn't say things like that often. I would say they are my chosen family for sure. I remember as a kid, my mom told me, she's like, Leah, we were missing a piece, like to our puzzle piece. We just didn't know what it was. And then when you came, it just was complete. I have felt self-conscious before trying to find my family, um, biological family that is, especially with my adopted dad. Um, I think, I'm not positive, but I feel like it's hard for him in a sense, because when I do talk to him about the racism I have got, um, I think it deep down it hurts him, but he just doesn't want to hear about it. So I think it could really hurt him to start this pro to start the process of finding my biological family. I don't think my dad wants to hear about the racism. I feel like he's experienced or mistreatment from people before, or he's experienced, um, or he's seen or heard other people um, experience things worse than I have. And I believe, or I feel like he thinks what I've experienced is less than them. I think that is true. I've not experienced as worse treatment as some people, but I believe my feelings are still strong in a way and that it does hurt and it has been a process of healing from that and not letting these things get to me and be my identity. My name is Leah Ilitello and this is my Korean American story. Mm -hmm.